Today we install a protein skimmer for my daughter's saltwater tank and we take a quick look around. It's coming right up. Hey YouTube, this is Pack Tech. Before we get started with this, let me just show you some of the progress downstairs. Okay, so the floors are pretty much done. Uh, we are gonna paint the walls, so we haven't completely moved in, and we're just, just now getting to the point where we can kind of sit and place some furniture. I actually won this couch uh, at a raffle at work, and it's been in the garage all this time, so we have this big red thing, and I had to get it out of the way, so I'm pretty excited to get that in the house. Uh, this is our old uh, rug from before. We'll probably replace that too, but that's the stand for my 55. Look how small it looks on this wall. Yeah, I'm thinking like, <laughs> if I could go about th that far. Uh, or I might have a smaller tank, push it up, and I'll bring the 27 gallon back and put it where it was and then put a long tank next to it. Or, I might put the 12 gallon that's upstairs someplace else and put the 27 gallon right here. It'll look really nice. Uh, we're gonna have, we are gonna have another piece of furniture over on this side, so I'm not sure. We're gonna at least have a chair. Like another chair right there or something. We'll have some sort of small stand for a TV and then TV will come off the wall probably over in this area, and then tank. Tank, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we'll probably do tanks like as far along this wall as we can. And um, on this side, we'll have like a sitting area or something with a table. And what I like to do, I like to play uh, board games a lot. So I'd like to have two ch at least two chairs and a table that I can bring out, take another uh, tabletop out of the garage and put on top and have like a nice big gaming surface. But we're not really here to talk about any of this stuff today, or even this guy. It's this. It's a protein skimmer. We're gonna unbox this one and we're gonna add it to Kerrigan's saltwater tank. She is actually at work today, so I'm gonna do this for her while she's gone. And uh, maybe when she comes home, we'll talk to her about it. All right? All right, so it looks like we have a couple of mounting brackets. The collection cup. Uh, let's see here, another mounting bracket. Looks like the, okay. Some more mounting hardware to help you get this thing onto your aquarium. The dimensions of this are uh, three by three all the way around. It's supposedly a three by three square and it's about 10 inches in height. It is an impeller based protein skimmer. <laughs> Basically everything I know about protein skimmers I've learned off uh, a couple of articles and but mostly YouTube videos that I've found around. I've seen a couple of different videos on this and how to set it up, so I'm hoping. Uh, I watched Mike from Mass Aquarium's video on this and a couple of others. But it's really, really interesting the way this works. Basically, this thing generates bubbles inside of your aquarium, right? And some of the small, small things will just adhere themselves to the lining of that bubble. And then as it goes up and bubbles up through the collection cup, those bubbles either tumble over or they burst here and uh, all that debris that they collect that really really micro not microscopic but all the really tiny debris all that those proteins and and uh and elements that can cause algae and other problems in your tank they just bubble over into this and are released that's really cool you usually only see these with saltwater tanks and to be honest i'm not sure why like i haven't looked that up yet but my guess is that the it can't make the same kind of bubbles that it can make with salt water because salt water's got such a thicker consistency. I'm just I'm just guessing, 
But yeah, so apparently proteins and things like that are attached or adhered to the sides of these bubbles. They bubble up through here and explode. All right, so the only other thing we have in here are instructions. And uh, usually I toss these, but I think just this one time, maybe I'll read. I'll go ahead and read some instructions. The reason I chose this particular one is that it seems to go with the Fluval Evo. They were made to go together. They even have a, a punch up, a punch block slot that I'm going to have to cut out. This is the lid to Kerrigan's uh, Evo tank. The Flex has a very similar lid like this too that you can just kind of punch out and then uh, this comes up so you can both collect what comes out of it and monitor the progress of your bubbles. Okay, let's see if I can assemble this just by looking at the picture on the back of the box. Okay. All right, I'm kind of getting the idea how it works. Okay, you've got an opening right here and there's a motor inside. But basically you've got two settings with this stuff, right? You've got the air setting and it says in the directions actually that you want to have this all the way up, all the way open. On this side we have the water level adjuster. So you can turn this and that adjusts the amount of water that, uh, that comes up to here. We'll play with that. A couple of videos I saw is, is said that you want to just get your water level like right to the bottom of this flat area. So I'll probably start there and uh, we'll see. It looks like this has suction cups to help this fit on. So I'm not sure what the brackets are for. It looked like you could also hang this if you need to. This is made for a five to 20 gallon aquarium. Um, you can absolutely put this on a little 10 gallon setup like Mike from Mass Aquariums did, or you can put it in a flex if you're doing a saltwater version of the flex, uh, or if you're doing an Evo like we are today. Okay, so there are some different and interesting steps that you go through if you're putting this in an Evo tank like I am today. And one is uh, you won't need these suction cups at all. And these just slide off. You just See how they're attached here on this little rail? You just kind of slide it down and you pull it off. Okay. You want to keep track of this cord. These things are dual purpose. One, they attach it to glass or whatever, right? And two, they keep this cord in place and we're going to actually swap it. It came with these other brackets. Remember these things? So these it becomes a singular purpose, which is to keep this cord routed here, because this is just gonna sit in that slot. That slot was made for this thing specifically, so these things are now just keeping the cord routed right at the back. So if you're putting this in an Evo, or probably maybe the Flex, I don't know for sure, uh, these things and these things, you can probably just store away, just in case you wanna put this in a different aquarium. It will go from five to 20 gallon aquariums. At least that's what it says in the instructions. If you have a different experience or have an opinion on that, leave it in the comments down below. The inevitable question with the protein skimmer is of course, why use it? And I'm not entirely clear. I mean, I get the principle of taking all the nutrients out of the water. See, I'm used to dealing with the plants and I guess you don't really have that in the system. I mean, it's just rocks and sand, right? So this will kind of help pull some of those nutrients out of the system that usually in my other tanks, plants would take up those nutrients. Now, Kerrigan's only had this tank for a little while and it's still kind of getting balanced out. She, uh, she only has two fish in there right now. Uh, one of them is specifically there for algae. It's the uh, emerald crab. Apparently they eat a lot of algae. She had these two rocks, right? And one, they were both covered with algae when we got back from vacation. <laughs> It's pretty cool. I never get to see it though. I, I think she has some videos she's going to give me, but yeah, I've, I've yet to really see him. Every time I go to look in there, he's hiding. So maybe I'll get lucky today while I'm in there playing with this. Big thanks to Tank Tees for the t-shirt. Uh, I found them on Instagram. I'm going to put a link to them down below. They've got a whole set of nerdish fish shirts that are really interesting and they're nice enough to send me this one. So I'll have a link to Tank Tees. Instagram in the description down below. That's where they reached out to me and uh, they got some cool shirts. Who knows, maybe they'll get a sexy Instagram t-shirt post from me like this.
Okay, so here's the skimmer, and I've got the side with the cord running up right here at the back, and we're just gonna slide it into place. Oop. Lands right down here. There's a little bitty thing that comes out, and it lands right there. It's pretty much, it's a pretty tight fit. There's a little bit of, a little bit of play in here. I'm not sure if there's any need or if there's the ability to adjust that. But. Now, of course, the cable be released. Let's sit down here with the other cables. It's going over this way. All right, I'm just gonna take the lid and just kind of coax it over the top here. And this is just poking out just enough to monitor it, make the adjustments you need to make, either to airflow, which they recommend to be open. So start with it all the way open to begin with. And uh, water level, which we're gonna play with and see. So all I need to do is put a little bit of water back in this tank, because I just did a water change for it. And um, yeah, we'll go ahead and turn this on, see what it does. I found a bottle labeled RO salt water. There's not much in it, but I didn't pull much out. So I'm just gonna add it to the back here. I'm kind of watching the other side to see when it gets to the level. And I pulled water out and then added some back. I didn't just top it off. Uh, when you top off the salt water aquarium, you probably already know this if you're watching uh, this video, but when you top off a salt water tank, you're supposed to do it with fresh water. That's why I pulled water out and did like a small water change. And I didn't just top it off. Yeah, so I took that bag, that huge bag of biological material that she had going, and I I took some of the content out and I've used it to fill the space where that charcoal was. Now, for being honest, I haven't gotten all the way to the instructions, but I believe the idea is that I just pop off this cap and uh, I pick this lid up when I'm doing a water change or something like that and I can empty out the dirty bubbles and that sort of thing just to kind of clean this. That's really interesting. I think the den yeah, I think the denser the bubbles are, the more they'll go up the top through here, and then you'll start getting the debris and all the stuff that gets stuck to the bubbles we put here. And hopefully, we'll end up with a lot cleaner tank. And it, boy, it was super easy to install, especially in the Evo, I used a box cutter to cut this part out. It fits perfectly on here. I'm trying to figure out what water level I want. I think, I think I'll start, I'm gonna start low. Well, I think I'm gonna start with it just right at the base of this and just kind of let it go for a few days and see how it does. I think this is the unfun part of pretty much starting any tank when it's new. As you can see, there's algae like really going to town here. I suspect she hasn't cleaned some of it off because she's out added a, that crab that supposedly likes to eat algae. He has eaten a great deal of the algae off this rock. I mean, both of them were just as covered. He hasn't made his way over here yet. We're hoping it might decrease the algae somewhat. Uh, I don't know if I should pluck this off or not. I probably will end up plucking this down just a little bit, kind of cleaning it up just a little bit, give it a fighting chance. Because if he is grazing on the algae in here, he's been in here two weeks and he definitely hasn't worked it down to nothing yet. So uh, maybe he could use a little bit of help getting it to a manageable state. I've also just done a water change, of course, so there's debris floating everywhere. But it's a pretty little tank and she's really enjoyed having it in here. It'll be interesting to see uh, what improvements we get with the protein skimmer and uh, maybe adding a couple more fish, maybe some cleaner shrimp or some other fish that eat algae. It'd be really cool if that crab would come out because I really love crabs. I wanna see him walking around, but I don't see him anywhere. Where are you, crab? I've got my focus turned off. I'm trying to just keep up with him. Not easy. Well, I decided I couldn't let it go and I wanted to clean some of this algae off. It doesn't seem to grab really well with these things though. It keeps wanting to come off. Uh, right as I get, right when I get to the top of the water, it starts to come off. So I've got this new plan, and uh, what I'm trying to do is just kind of loosen it up and get it into the water column. I've actually done this before with hair algae too in a freshwater tank. I've never done it in a saltwater tank. But it's kind of the same principle. This stuff's too wispy to try and tweeze out. What I can do is rough it up 
get it into the water column. Now that I've got big chunks floating around in there, I can simply take a net. I call this the whale and plankton approach. <laughs> Just kind of stir up the water, get all those things that I pulled off loose, and then I just go around and catch them. In here, I've been able to pull out quite a bit of algae without being terribly frustrated. It's always a chance you're going to send a little bit off to another part of the tank and it'll start algae there, but I think when you're where I'm at now, where it's kind of everywhere already, it's probably all right. There's the crab. He's, he's, come on Gucci. There's the crab. He's alive and down there just kind of hanging out. All I can see is basically one arm moving around. Well, look who finally made it home. Thanks. I've <laughs> done a little bit of maintenance on your tank. We've got a protein skimmer, the mini protein skimmer installed, and I think I've got it working okay. I'll let you read the instructions though, just to make sure. <laughs> and uh, I trimmed off some algae. I don't think I did a very good job. There's still a lot of things swimming around, so. Uh, but I did a small water change and stuff, and uh, I guess we're good to go. <laughs> cool. Hold on. I want to get this. It's a, it's a Canadian coin <laughs> for your troubles. <laughs> you know, usually I do a little dance for that. So anyway, I kind of had fun playing with your tank today. I hope you don't mind. But I guess what's next with this tank is just going to be to add some more critters, right? What kind of stuff do you want to put in here? Yeah, I might some, put some more snails and um, hermit crabs and um, hopefully maybe a clownfish or um, what, one of the clownfish varieties. <laughs> well, you've got a bunch of different cool looking clownfish at your store right now, don't you? Yeah. All right, that's all we got for you this week. Until next time, follow your bliss. Keep a clean tank. And try out a protein skimmer. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> got Facebook buttons. That was for free. Hey YouTube, this is Peg Tech. Today we can take them. Monitor the progress of your bubbles. And 